Let us take a short quiz to test our understanding of capital expenditure, revenue expenditure, capital receipt and revenue receipt. Assertion. Damages paid on account of breach of contract to supply certain goods is a capital expenditure. This is an assertion, a statement. What does the statement say? Once more, damages paid on account of breach of contract to supply certain goods is a capital expenditure. Reasoning. Such damages are incurred in the ordinary course of business. Such damages are incurred in the ordinary course of business. Okay. What are our options? A. Both the statements are correct. And second is a correct explanation of the first. B. Both the statements are correct, but the second is not a correct explanation of the first. First statement is correct, the second is not. And D, first statement is not correct, but the second is correct. So I will give you a little time, just go through, look at the two sentences. See if any of the sentences are correct, is only one correct or both correct or both wrong. Just understand and then let us try to figure it. Damages paid on account of breach of contract to supply certain goods is a capital expenditure. We buy and sell regularly. That is the trading activity. It's a regular business activity. There will always be a contract with all our suppliers to buy and sell. If there is a breach of contract, some damages would be incurred. That would be an expense which is... So, in the ordinary course of business. An expense which is in the ordinary course of business is called an expense. This, such damages are incurred in the ordinary course of business and therefore it is actually what is called an expense. Therefore, it cannot be a capital expenditure. It is not a capital. Damages paid on account of breach of contract to supply a certain, supply certain goods is capital expenditure. No, it would be a revenue expenditure. Therefore, the first sentence apparently is wrong. And though they have said reasoning here, don't, it doesn't look, this is not, the second is not really an explanation of the first because the first one says capital expenditure. The second one says the reasoning they have given is for it to be a revenue expenditure. So now let us see both statements are correct. No, that's not true. Both the statements are correct, but the second is not a correct statement. That is also not true. First statement is correct. No, it is not correct. Therefore, our option should be D. Let's just read that. First statement is not correct. Yes, that's true. It's not correct. But the second is correct. Yes. So, our correct option should be D. So, please understand. You've got a statement. You've got a reasoning. And your first option here says that both statements are correct. And the second is a correct explanation of the first. So though they have said it is reasoning, the explanation is such that it is just opposite of the assertion. Okay, so a correct answer should be D. Next, what is the difference between deferred revenue expenditure and prepaid expense? A. Accounting treatment, B. Estimation of amount, C. Benefit for more than one accounting period, D. Nature of expenditure. The correct answer should be B, estimation of amount. Both accounting treatment actually, we take it to future years. We spread it over a period of time. Benefit for more than one accounting period, in both cases we expect and treat it accordingly. So nature of the expenditure, in both cases we are convinced it is revenue. But estimation of the amount in prepaid is certain. Certain. Estimation is certain. For deferred revenue expenditure, this is uncertain. So the difference is largely in the estimation of amount. 
correct answer would be B option. Machinery was purchased for 10,000. 500 was paid as wages for erection of machinery. Installation charges were 1,000. Machinery account should be debited by A, 10,000, B, 10,500, C, 11,500 and D, 18,500. All costs of purchase of machinery up to the point that it starts functioning. So 10,000 plus 500 plus 1,000 all should be added to the cost of machinery and therefore our correct answer should be C, 11,500. Correct answer, 11,500. <clears throat> Next, X Limited spent... 10,000 towards construction of office building. It also spent 50,000 towards construction of temporary store and used the store building for construction purpose. On completion of building construction, the store was dismantled and the materials were sold for 20,000. Mr. A, a supervisor, was paid 60000 as his salary during the period of construction and he devoted two-thirds of his time for the building construction. The capitalized cost of office building was A, 10 lakhs, B, 11 lakh 10,000, C, 10 lakh 90,000 and D, 10 lakh 70,000. All costs incurred till the building can be used should be capitalized. <clears throat> Let us see, 10 lakhs. It also spent 50,000 towards construction of a temporary store. Use the store building for construction purposes. After completion, the store was dismantled and the materials were sold for 20,000. This cost which is incurred of 50,000 this was only for the purpose in order to facilitate construction of the building. Therefore, such cost should be capitalized. If by dismantling it and selling it, we get some income, that income will go to reduce the cost of this asset. So, we will add 50,000 being the cost towards construction and reduce the sale of materials by 20,000. Sale of materials is sale of what materials? The materials for the shed which was used for construction of the office building. Not your ordinary business activity. So we are reducing it from the cost of construction of the building. Mr. A, a supervisor, he was paid 60,000 as his salary during the period of construction and he devoted two-third of his time for the building construction. So what is two-third of 60,000 should also be added to the cost of the building. How much is two-third of this should be equal to 40,000. So let us add 40,000. What do we get now? 10 lakh 70,000 should be the correct answer. Option D should be the correct answer. <clears throat> Next, a truck was purchased and after some time, the name of the company was painted on it for advertisement purpose for 1000. This is A, capital expenditure, B, deferred revenue expenditure, C, revenue expenditure and D, none. Advertisement purposes, name painted on the truck would should be taken as a Revenue expenditure. Answer should be C. Revenue expenditure. Next, XYZ Limited has a house for three years. It used it as a guest house. Now it incurred an expenditure of 250000 for repairing the roof of this house. Expenses incurred on such repairs are A. Capital B. Revenue C. Deferred Revenue and D. None of the above.
repair charges should be revenue expenditure uh, however it is possible that since this amount of 250000 may have considered as may be considered as a, a substantial amount in the earlier years and earlier might also have been treated as a deferred revenue expenditure but ordinarily any expenditure which is spent on repairs since repairs is a cost for maintaining the asset in the condition in the current condition it is supposed to be a revenue expenditure <clears throat> so we will treat it as a revenue expenditure <clears throat> next medium term loan obtained from bank for augmenting working capital is A, revenue expenditure, B, capital expenditure, C, revenue receipt, D, capital receipt. It's a loan obtained from bank. First, it's a receipt for augmenting the working capital. It has improved the working capital position, but it's a loan. It's a liability. Money has to be repaid and therefore it is a capital receipt. <clears throat> 